Hello everyone, I'm Linda Hartling. I am the Director of the Human Dignity Humiliation Studies and I'm also one of the initiator, initiators of the World Dignity University. And I'm here with Evelyn Linder, the founding president of the Human Dignity Humiliation Studies Network and also a co-initiator of the World Dignity University. And we're here to talk a little bit about your personal life. I've known you since 1998. We met through Don Klein, who was a pioneer in the field of community psychology. He had written uh, and edited a, a group of articles for the Journal of Primary Prevention, and you contacted him, and he directed you to me. And uh, it's been at least 10 years of working together on these large projects. But you lead a very special life and I wanted to take some time to hear about how you organize your life to do this work that's so important looking at the issues of human dignity and humiliation. I have uh, tried to formulate what I do since years uh, and I myself lack words for what I do and to understand my experience. So I'm so glad that we are together in this and that um, I can be with you just now because you and staying with you in your home and your human dignity and humiliation studies dialogue home mm -hmm. um, because uh, this makes my own path clearer also to me. Uh, I have uh, found these wonderful books in your house and I found <laughs> this uh, lovely quote uh, that I would like to read. Um, uh, it is um, a quote from the indigenous, indigenous Native American a leader, Sitting Bull, who lived until 1890, who said, White men like to dig in the ground for their food. My people prefer to hunt buffalo. White men like to stay in one place. My people want to move their teepees here and there to different hunting grounds. The life of white men is slavery. They are prisoners in their towns or farms. The life my people want is freedom. So this is uh, what I put on my biography on our website, <laughs> just uh, you know, when I found it. And I reflected on that. And I said, I so much resonate with this notion of freedom there. And, and then I tried to formulate uh, my, and you find it on the website, my thoughts. Um, as I wrote clearly, I do not hunt buffalo and I do not have a teepee. Yet what I do is refraining from defining a small geographical locality as my home. My home is the entire global village, or more precisely, the people I love in that village. And I love mm -hmm. you. <laughs> I do not even see my life as nomadic. Some people think that I travel a lot. You know, I, I do not even resonate with the notion of travel. To my view, I stay in love rather than travel in circles in what could be called a caged rat race. I, in other words, I see myself being much more still and true to my place, namely love or love relationships of love and those who sell out their soul for a rat race that is defined by large scale societal frames that have increasingly in the last decades become ever more toxic. I see many people travel extensively, yet usually they have a caged rat race base and frame within which they travel. I prefer to stay still in the realm of love. I'm closer to a person who chooses to opt out to live a simpler life nearer to nature, for example, than to a frequent business flyer who travels in circles in the isolated elite bubbles of international hotels. I never search for a place to stay. I move between different relational contexts of love and the place to stay is secondary to being embedded into relationships of mutual care. And for me, mm, you and my relationship with you and your f husband and your family in your home, for me, this is epitomizing what, you know, what gives me satisfaction in my life to be in the realm of love loving relationships together with you <laughs> and I would love you to to clarify to me more what this means perhaps also for you well for me I think uh, what 
our work is about is creating a enlarging the boundaries of our capacity and our compassion to create spheres of love or mm -hmm. spheres of relationships that provide for the mutual benefit, the growth, the support of all people. And we've done that in our, I think we've done that in our work with the Human Dignity Network, where people are engaged in authentic relationships and struggling with ideas together, but in support and in, um, with a, a profound commitment to using their energy to create a better world for all. And I think what's so wonderful about your efforts, Evelyn, is that you are our model relational bridge builder. You are a person who reaches out to people across the globe and invite them into the dialogue. And that has enriched the dialogue for our human dignity work, for our efforts with the World Dignity University Initiative. You've enriched it by making it possible for so many people to participate in these initiatives. So for me, having you as a model of living in a global village has been a truly eye-opening and uh, enriching experience. Thank you so very much. And uh, we would love to have uh, your thoughts uh, in because it's a very unique path that we both go, the relational path, placing relationships first, not the locality, not four walls. We just discussed the notion of buying a home. And I said to Linda, you cannot buy a home. You know, we should not say that. You can buy a house. But then you need to fill it with relationship building work uh, so that it can be a home. And this cannot be bought. So I thank you very much for your interest and, and we look forward to sharing your thoughts. Thank you.